Welcome. I want to show you one of the techniques that I use to make a series of equally spaced holes around the outline of an object. Uh, one of the things I make is I make these uh, LED Christmas ornaments. So you can see this is made out of uh, thin plastic, thin plastic like plexiglass, and it has a bunch of holes for small LEDs. Uh, these are five millimeter LEDs. So it took me a while to figure out how to do this, and I thought I would share um, how I do it with new designs. So I'm running uh, Fusion 360 here. I'm not going to show you everything on how you use Fusion 360. Um, there are a bunch of good tutorials out there and startups out there. So we're going to flip to a new design. And I'm going to start by creating the outline of the object. Now, generally, you know, you want a star or a heart or, you know, something recognizable. For the sake of this, I'm just going to kind of draw... I don't know what this is. Okay, maybe it's, it's kind of a peanut here. So I have this design. Let's see if I can make it a little more peanut, peanut shape. Okay, so that's kind of peanut shaped, so that's what I want to do. So this is just a flat sketch. So to convert it into a real body, I can go here, choose extrude. I'm going to be using three millimeters for my thickness. And now you see I have a real body with some thickness here. So what I want to do is I want to put a series of holes right on this line all the way around. So how do I do that? We'll start, do another sketch, and we're going to draw the circle that will be the hole. And in this case, I'm going to make it three millimeters. Now, generally in Fusion, you'd uh, put that size as a parameter so that you could change it afterwards pretty easily. But in this case, I'm going to hard code it. And I want this hole to be right on that path line. So I'm going to choose to constrain them to be coincident. So now that makes sure those are the same. So that's just a little flat drawing. I want it to be actually the same thickness as the peanut. So we'll go back and we'll extrude. Zoom in a little. It's actually that part and that part. I want to extrude them towards the back. My good coat could go here and just say three millimeters. But one of the things I like to do is do to object instead. So I can say I can do it to this face. You notice it's red, it's because it's trying to cut. I want it to do new body. Now theoretically in Fusion I should be able to, to cut that as a hole and move the face of the hole all the way around. But when I've done that, uh, I've tried, I've run into bugs. So what we end up doing here is making it a whole thing. So now I have peanut shape and then this circle thing which partly overlaps the peanut. So I now need to use this as a pattern and run it all the way around the outside of the peanut. Uh, that's what uh, Fusion 360 would call a path. So I can go to create, pattern, pattern on path. You need to switch and make sure that the pattern type is a body because this circle is what's called a body. So, no, I don't want that. Okay, so the body is selected and the path, I can just choose the path around the outline. And now notice I can drag along, by default it's putting three of these along here. And I like to try 20, so we'll try 20. And I can drag this around until I get all the way back. Okay, so that's probably a pretty good spacing. The problem is I don't know exactly what the spacing should be from this guy. I'm sure that's space. From this guy to this guy. And I can eyeball it, but it's kind of hard to get it to get it right, and I want it to be as close as I can get it. So what I'm going to do right now, the way this is set up, it's saying do 20 of these circles along a distance of about 200 millimeters. And 
measuring from here all the way around to here is called the extent. So it says distance type extent. What I'm going to do is flip this to spacing. So now it says it's a little over 10 millimeters from one to the other. And I can do this little trick. I can add another one. And what I want to do is adjust things so that that overlaps the original. And what typically happens is, okay, there that actually looks perfect. Sometimes I have to go in actually enter a, a value here to make that right. Okay, so now that means that if the next one, 21st one, is here, then the spacing from this to this is now the same as the spacing every balls. And now I can just get rid of the 21st one. So that takes me back to 20. And there are all the objects that I need. Okay, so now all I need to do is convert those to holes uh, in a bigger object. Now there are two ways I know of doing this. I'll show you the way I originally have done it and then I'll show you perhaps a nicer way. So I need something that's bigger than this so that I can use each of these circles or cylinders um, as a tool to cut through the bigger part. So once again, create a sketch. This time I'm just going to draw something kind of amorphous. kind of blobby shape. And this can be nice sometimes if you want a specific shape or you have a specific like rectangular size, uh, you might want to just do that. Um, this can be nice if you're cutting out of plexiglass or something so that you have nice smooth outlines. Uh, so I would do this sometimes. I'm going to take that. We're going to do the same extrusion. sure it's a new body. And now what I have is all three of these. I have this body, which is the whole thing. I have this middle one, and then I have these individual guys. So I'm going to take this one, the, the middle one, and turn it off. So and I'm also going to turn off this new one. No, not that one. Take that one and turn it off. So all I have are the ones that I want to use to make holes. So now I need to use these to cut holes in that new body I just created. And I do that with an operation called combine. And those are going to be what are called tool bodies. So I select all of them. I'm going to be doing a cut. And I need to tell it what body I'm going to cut with. So I can do that and you can see it's actually giving me a preview. Do cut, and there's my final output. Nice body with all of those circles uh, along the path that I wanted to cut. So that's pretty simple. So that's kind of the way I would do this in the past. Let's roll back, design to when we just had these guys, and that turned on. I'm going to get rid of those older, some those later steps. I'll show you a perhaps a nicer way of doing this. So what I really want, if I'm, I don't want a big amorphous thing, um, what I really want is this peanut shaped thing to be just enough bigger that I can use the cylinders to cut. And fortunately Fusion actually has a nice feature that just lets me do that. So modify offset face. And the face is going to be this outside path. So once I get that, I'll just drag this out. What do you know? Magically gets bigger all along the whole thing. So we'll say, I don't know what that means. And there we are. We have that new guy and we'll do the combine operation the same way we did before. Select all the tool bodies, turn back on the big one, and there we are with our final output. Now if I'm cutting this on uh, something that's flat, so like a laser cutter or some CNC's, um, I would want to get a SVG out of this. There are a couple ways to do that in Fusion. I happen to use this little tool and there's this uh, 
handheld CNC router called a Shaper Origin that I happen to own, and they have a nice add-in you can add to Fusion 360. So all it does is it, say, it says collect a face, select a face, and you choose output. And it will just write out this face as a, let's call it peanut. And now I have peanut.svg. I just pull that in my laser cutter software or whatever other CNC I wanted.